everyone, it's Carly Hall and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to take a look at some faux leather from 651vinyl.com. They just launched this new product and I was lucky enough to be sent some samples before the launch so I could play with it, experiment, and share my opinions with you. So I just wanted to show you the colors that they sent me. This is just a small sampling, so there actually will be a lot more colors available on their site, but I'm already so excited about this product because it is a 12 by 12 sheet of faux leather. It has that nice textured look, and then it's also soft on the back. So it would make great earrings, bracelets, keychains, bows, all of the different things. So I chose to work with this pink today, this pearlized pink. So I'm gonna show you the bows I made and let's get started. Before I show you the bows I made, I wanted to show you just how many projects you could fit on one 12 by 12 piece of faux leather. So you can see it's a full 12 by 12 and I cut it on a strong grip mat, but I still have a lot of negative space. So I could make some earrings, maybe a bracelet, some keychains, just out of one sheet. So here are all the bows that I was able to create. And they're pretty good size, you can see compared to the size of my hand. They're not small little baby bows, they're pretty big. So I have these three templates on my blog. This bow here is actually the same and it's just assembled a little bit differently. And then it's assembled with some tails on this one. So I'll show you the file and then we'll cut it in Design Space and get started. In Design Space, you'll upload the file from my blog. It's completely free over at carlyhall.com and I will put a link in the video description so you know exactly where to find it. It'll come in at this size, 11.4 by 6.862, but you can absolutely resize it, change the colors, do whatever you want to do to the file to make it work for you. So I'm gonna show you what each different bow is so that you know which one to make. Okay, let's start with this dark purple bow on the bottom. If you cut it the size that I have it in my file, the final bow turns out to be almost three inches wide the widest point is about three inches, and then it is about three and a half inches long. So that is the bottom bow that is on that file. Next, we have this middle purple bow, and when you assemble it, it turns out to look like this bow here. This is one of my favorite files because it really comes together super quickly, and you just need a little bit of hot glue. It's as wide as the tails, so about 3.75, and about 1.75 inches wide. So a good size bow and super cute and easy to assemble. This top bow is the one that I made a couple of different ways. So I'll show you that. So the first two ways I'm gonna show you, just ignore this piece here. You'll only need these two pieces. I find these ones a little bit surprising because that little rectangle turns into these bows. And you can see that the pinches are just pinched opposite. So this is a pinched up and this is a pinch down, and so we'll assemble them both ways, but it's just two rectangles that turn into these really cute bows. And the final size on this is a little bit over three inches, say like three and a quarter. So good size bows and just two little rectangles. And then now with the tails, the final project looks like this. So here is the bow with the tails, and you can see that I just added that to the back to give it a little bit more interest. So a subtle change that makes the bow that much more elevated. Now that we know what everything looks like assembled, we are going to cut it. I'm going to make a copy of those little pinch bows, these ones, before, because I wanna make a couple of extra ones so I can show you the different folding techniques. So those two will be the ones without the back, and then we'll have this one as a completed bow. And then I'm going to cut everything in the same color. So I'm just gonna highlight all of my pieces and choose my fill color to just be one color since I'm going to use one color of faux leather. Once you're ready with the number of copies that you wanna make, you can resize them. After you're done, click make it. On this page, you can rearrange your materials to fit however you'd like. So if you wanna nest them together more, you have the option to rotate, adjust, and nest things together so that you really don't waste any material. This looks pretty good to me, so I'm gonna continue on. Once you connect to your machine, you'll wanna choose the material that you're cutting. I'm using my maker, so I'm gonna choose Browse All Materials. 
If you're on an Explore machine, you also have the ability to browse all materials. Just make sure you turn your dial to custom and then click browse all materials. We're gonna search for faux. And if you're on an Explore machine, I recommend using this faux leather paper thin option. But since I'm using a maker, I'm going to choose this faux leather, the first one without the Cricut C icon, because that will cut with the rotary blade. Anytime I can use my rotary blade, I prefer it. I just think it's a really clean cut and I feel like it doesn't drag as much. So I'm going to use that faux leather option and click done. To confirm you're using the right setting, you'll just wanna to look to see if your rotary blade is showing up there and mine is, so it's good to go. On the machine side, you're going to load your leather onto a strong grip mat and you'll wanna make sure that it's nice and sticky so it doesn't move. And then you'll just burnish it on to your mat so that it's nice and smooth. The pretty side will be up facing you. Then load that into your machine and cut it. I decided to leave my star wheels. I didn't notice them denting the material at all. And I do feel like they hold the material down a little bit better. So I decided to leave my star wheels and didn't push those over. Once you're ready, click the flashing C. Before you click the unload button, I always like to peel back my material and just make sure that my settings are cut properly. I always recommend doing a cut test cut. Since I've used this, I test cut my material, but you can see that this is peeling up really nicely. There may be a couple of snags that you have to trim with your scissors or just pull a little bit more aggressively, but let's unload this. It looks pretty good. So you can see that this material cuts really nicely on your Cricut machine. Like I mentioned, if you want to do a test cut, I definitely recommend that because not all Cricut machines are created equal. So your settings may be a little bit different. So just make sure to do a test cut. This probably could have used a little bit more pressure, but overall pretty good. I'm just gonna organize my pieces so I can see each bow. So we know that this is one bow, two bows. So the two little rectangles go together. And then the larger tails, those go with the rectangles too. So these three pieces will go together. So we'll start with these. For the first bow, you'll wanna grab these two pieces, the rounded rectangle and this little strip. We're going to make this bow first. So if you wanna to skip to whatever bow you wanna make, you can absolutely do that. So for the first one, you'll need either a spool of thread or some twine. It's optional, but it does make it easier. I'm gonna use twine for the video since you can see it a little bit better. Starting with this larger rectangle, we're going to fold it in half. So we want our fold to go down. So you're gonna fold it in half and just kind of pinch it in the middle so that you know where that center is. And then fold it the other way again to pinch it in the center just so you know where that center mark is. We're gonna fold it hot dog. And then while still holding that center, we're gonna fold it down halfway, and then we're gonna fold it back up. So we're kind of creating a little accordion fold there. So down and then back up. And you'll wanna make those pieces as even as you can, but if they're not, it adds a little bit of personality. So whatever you wanna do. Then grab a piece of twine, I'm gonna cut mine long, and we're just gonna slip that between our thumb and those accordion pieces. You can add a dab of hot glue at this step, and that will hold your twine in place or you can just kind of wrap it around. I'm gonna adjust mine to the center after I get it positioned. But you just wrap it around a couple of times to hold that accordion. Then slide it to the center and tie it into a knot. So mine's not in the center at all right now. So you just wanna slide it over until it's in the center. Once you're happy with the placement, you can place it down onto a surface and tie it into a knot. So you can see what it looks like at this point. I'm gonna slide mine over a little bit more. So it's a little bit more in the center and adjust my folds just a bit. So you can see it's nice and even. Once you're happy, just trim off the tails. If you wanna attach a clip, you'll just take your little piece of leather there, grab a dab of hot glue on the back right here. I love these silicone mats because I don't worry about ruining my tables. 
And then we're going to wrap that around to the front. And these are extra long for this reason. So then you can place your clip with a dab of hot glue. And I like to open my clip and place my strap around the clip like this. And then you'll just trim this to the size that you want. And just like that, you have a super simple bow with a clip, oop, with a clip attached and it's good to go. So that's bow number one. And you can see that these bows look a little bit different because of the texture of the leather. So this one, the pink is a little bit more rigid than the rose gold. So super fun to try out the different colors. For the second bow, the process is almost identical, but instead of the fold going in, like this one that we just did, the fold will come up. So we'll take the same rectangle, we'll fold that in half, and then half again to find that center point. And then we will fold up instead. So our first fold is out, then back up, and then down. So these are called pinch bows, and you can see that the shape really just forms itself. So again, we'll start in the center, make sure we're in the center as much as we can. We can adjust that like you saw in the last one. But then on the first side, we're gonna fold up, creating that accordion fold, fold down, and just pinch. Other side, fold up, and then fold down. And you get that cute little pinch bow. So again, take a piece of string, leave yourself a little bit of room so you can tie the knot, and then just wrap it around a couple of times. And make sure it's in the center as much as you can so that it makes it easier. Place that down on your surface and just tie your knot. Right, you can adjust it at this point again. Just slide over. I will say it's easier to adjust twine than it is to adjust thread. So make sure that you don't rip too hard on your thread and break that. And then again, just the exact same process. So a dab of glue on the back. And if you wanna add a barrette, just make sure that you stick it on before you loop it all the way around. For this one, I'll just loop all the way around. And like I said, I left you a lot of extra so that you can fit that barrette. It's always better to trim off than not have enough. And then just secure it. So here are the two folded bows. And then the last one is just adding this back piece. So instead of creating the whole bow, I will skip that part and then I'll just show you where to add it. Using whatever pinch technique you like more, you're going to be at this step and then we're just going to place it onto our tails. So just with a dab of hot glue in the center of your tails, you'll secure that on and just hold for a couple of seconds. So that's how it looks from the back. Here's from the front. And then same process. Dab of glue on the back for the wraparound. If you wanna add that barrette, make sure to stick that in there. And then loop it around. Trim down your excess if you're not adding a barrette. And just a dab of glue on the back. And hold in place. I think this one's my favorite. So cute, I love the little tails. I think it adds so much. And the folds, I just, I think it adds so much dimension. So yeah, that's probably my favorite. Here's it in pink. Okay, so just like that, we have our first three bows done. All that same file, the rectangle, and they look perfect. So let's move on to the next one. So the next one, I like to call this my gift bow. I feel like it would look perfect on a gift box. So it's this final shape, and the pieces you need are the sunglass shape, the smaller tails, and this rectangle. It goes together really simply, so we're just going to start by adding some glue onto the rectangle ends, and you'll just fold them over. I like to hide my back, so I like the overhang to be over the edges so you don't see that from the front. So just line up your pieces as best as you can. It's a personal preference. 
If your other side ends up looking better, you can just flip it over. So this is what your front will look like. So you can see that the backs don't hang out of the edges. And then we'll just stick a dab of blue in the center of this one. You can whip these out. These ones go so fast. And just line it up. And then wrap that tail around. So here, we're at, I feel like I'm going a little fast because this one's so simple. Here's the back. We're gonna start on the back, dab of glue. Right on the back. Let that dry for a second. Loop it around. And then if you wanna add the brett, I'll just show it again since I said you could skip but you'll wanna add the bra at this stage so it's underneath. And then just a dab of glue underneath there. And trim it down. Just like that. I think it looks really finished when you have the bra underneath there and you know it's not going anywhere. So here is the finished product of this one, and here it is in pink. Okay, four down, one to go. Our final bow shape is this pinch bow with these more exaggerated tails. So you'll want to grab the pieces that look like this, and this, and then a wraparound piece. To start, it's very similar to the pinch bow. So we're gonna fold it in half to find that center. So just kind of give yourself a crease and then fold it again. For this one, you have the option of doing an outward pinch or an inward pinch. For mine, I did an outward pinch. So it's face up. So I'm gonna do that for this one too. So we'll just do the same accordion fold. Up and down. Up and down. And this one you can fuss with, manipulate so that it's in the center, whatever you want to do. So again, we'll do it one more time. Just make sure that you are in the center as best as you can. But then we'll just fold it up and fold it down. It looks like it's going to be difficult, but when you do it a couple of times, it just kind of goes into the shape. So while still holding, just slip that piece of thread or twine in between your fingers and wrap it around a couple of times. And then press it into your surface and tie a bow. And then trim down your tails. Okay, looks pretty good. You'll just wanna make sure that it's in the center again. I feel like I'm just repeating myself. And then we're gonna fold in the pieces into the center like this. Again, I don't like my edges to show, so I might adjust this file so it might look a little bit different so that you have a little bit more area to glue to. But we're just gonna do a dab of glue in the center and then just press in that edge right into the glue. And then another dab of glue and press it into the center. So the file might look a little bit different when you get to it because that's what I do. I like to adjust my files if I don't like them when I'm assembling. But this works, just could be a little bit more user-friendly. So then you have your bow like this, which could be cute with just this piece too. So if you don't wanna add the tails, you can just end at this step, and then you have a puffy variation of the other bows. So that's cute too. But if you wanna add the tails, then we're going to do a pinch technique on the tails too. So just find the center, and then I'm gonna go out and do the same pinch technique. So out, up, up, and then down. I feel like I blocked you on that one. So again, we're gonna go start halfway and then fold each side up and then down. Up and then down. So like you're just making a little fan an accordion fan. Grab some twine or your thread and wrap it around. So 
So your tails will kind of go down like this. So you want your curved edges down on the bottom. Then add a drop of glue right on the top. And you're gonna sit your bow on top of that. And then just hold them together. I like my bow fronts to be in the front. So I just kind of adjust those to bring them to the front. Once you're happy with your bow, you're gonna start on the back and just add a drop of glue on the back of your bow and secure it right there. Let that dry for a second. And then wrap this one all the way around. I'll make this piece a little bit longer too on my file because this is just long enough to wrap for the bow without a clip, but if you wanna add a clip, it'd be a little bit too short. So I'll give you a couple options on the length there. And then you'll just finish it up with some glue. Just like that, oh, I love it. So like I mentioned, you don't have to add the tails. You can leave the tails off if you don't want those on there, but I think it's a fun little bow with or without the tails. So let's look at all of our bows. Here are the final projects. You can see the bows turned out so cute and they were really easy to assemble. So you'll have to let me know if you download the file and try it out. You still have so much material left over. So one sheet goes a long way. And as always, I will put a link in the video description to all the products used in today's video as well as links to all my social media. So if you need more help, check out my Facebook group, Cricut Crafts with Carly Hall. We'd love to help you there. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to like it and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.